All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. And today we're gonna be talking, well, surprisingly about the US banking system because, well, a lot of pretty insane news has been developing over the last couple of days. And of course, you probably have already at this point heard from the news or social media about the Silicon Valley bank collapse. And basically there's a lot of speculation going on right now about what's going to happen next. How involved is the government going to be? Is, F is SVC basically? going to be like the only bank that collapses in this entire thing well we have more information about that and we have more information from the stock market as of this morning i want to talk about here today because discourse online seems to be pretty negative surrounding this entire thing at least towards you know the outlook of how this is going to end up right people are not very confident and of course here in the united states you know i feel like we as americans we tend to underestimate the government a lot we tend to distrust the government and the media a lot more i'm not saying that's a bad thing because I definitely as a person have a lot of distrust too and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later in this video but that's already kind of like the foundation of everything right everyone is already skeptical everybody already pretty much doesn't believe really a lot of the official narrative kind of surrounding this entire thing here I know that like President Biden his staff has been tweeting non-stop it seems like recently trying to convince everybody oh hey the banking system is safe you know America's going to prevail all this and whatnot right but I already made a video the other day talking about the Silicon Valley bank collapse and how there was just a, a whole complete mess surrounding that, right? And that's been already widely publicized. There's already been a lot of information about that, so I don't want to spend too long kind of focusing in on that in specific in this video. If you really want to learn more about the Silicon Valley bank collapse in specific, I recommend that after this video, you go ahead and you go watch that video. But it's been pretty worrisome for banks over the last few days, right? The public hasn't reacted to the news of the Silicon Valley bank collapse well. So in another worrisome development that's actually pretty similar to the entire Silicon Valley bank collapse situation, the third largest bank failure in US history also just happened right after this entire thing. It may have slipped your mind, it may have slipped the news that you've seen, but Signature Bank also failed and was being seized as of Sunday. Like I said, that is now the third largest bank failure in US history with Silicon Valley being the second, meaning that in the last, well, you know, two weeks or so, the US has seen the second and third largest largest bank collapses in the entire country's history. And now there's a lot of panic basically in the air that the factors that led to these banks collapsing might end up leading other banks to kind of fall in some sort of like domino effect where banks essentially just start closing down. Now the government, especially the Biden administration is heavy trying to, you know, jump in and try and mix everything up, right? They're trying to break that narrative down. The government wants everybody to believe that the US banking system is safe. You know, they're trying to show that it's efficient, that it's resilient and that the efforts that the federal government is going to take to preserve everything here are going to end up working and well the issue obviously with everything here is that like I said there's so much distrust especially towards the government and I mean you got to think we live in a country that 15 years ago was going through the 2008 financial crisis I remember I remember that happening when I was a kid right like that was a pretty major economic moment in American history too right and well the banks you know they had issues and a lot of companies had issues and there was widespread you know bailouts from the US government and basically the taxpayers were out here bailing out Wall Street and everybody else right and you got to think that was only 15 years ago you know people are still in a situation where they very very easily remember that you know what I mean and that's pretty much what people are assuming is gonna happen now you know people are wondering like are the taxpayers gonna end up having to bail out other institutions and whatnot like what exactly is gonna go on here so one thing that we have learned surrounding the Silicon Valley bank collapse is that all people with deposits all companies, all individuals, anything with deposits in the bank will be insured and will recover their money. The federal government's already confirmed that. And this is another one of those efforts, like I said, for the US government to prove that the banking system is resilient, right? Because obviously if people who had money in the bank just lost the money that they had, that would sow a lot of distrust in the banking system because well, with other banks now collapsing, what if your bank collapses tomorrow? You know what I mean? Do you lose your deposit? No one wants to go through that. That would have a devastating impact on the economy and on banks and the financial system in the US would be under immediate distress like immediate distress I mean you can't really imagine a world where like people don't trust the banks or anything right even with their savings and you can't imagine that that's a world where the economy is going to be very healthy right so right now there's a lot of eyeballs kind of towards other banks uh like just this morning there was a pretty big situation on Wall Street over on the stock market actually because a vast wide portion of banks that were being 
being traded on the stock market actually got halted for trading this morning because bank stocks have been taking an absolute hit since everything has been unfolding. This is a screenshot I saw from Rawls Alerts over on Twitter, and it shows just dozens of different symbols on the New York Stock Exchange being halted for trading right after the opening bell. This is at 9.37 to 9.50 a.m., just minutes after the bell opened and trading officially started this morning. As of a couple hours ago, they had majority of them at least been reopened for trading, meaning that it wasn't like an all-day halt or anything like that. It was just a little periodic in-time halt. But bank stocks have just been getting completely demolished on the market over the last few days. And that's probably going to continue. And especially if we see another major bank collapse or anything like that, it's just going to continue to, I feel like, worsen the effects of what we're already seeing. You know, a lot of this has been led by that distrust, right? You know, and I feel like even to a part of it, right, a lot of what caused, you know, like a, a big run on this bank too is like distrust because of like the whole Sam Bankman Freed thing that happened just a few months ago. You know, this company was worth billions upon billions of dollars trading crypto and everything. And then there was just this massive fall apart and, you know, the fallout of that we still are dealing with. You know what I mean? So there's been a lot of pretty recent situations where, you know, it, it just seems like a lot of this ties together in some ways. And there's just so much distrust and people don't really know what to believe, right? Because on one hand, you know, the government's sitting here telling you like, oh, hey, look, it's fine. You know, there's, there's not going to be some major financial crisis here in the United States. This is just a limited spread event or whatever, right? We're going to be handling this as best as we can. But then, you know, people, we realize like the government never has really helped us. You know what I mean? Like, at least that's how I feel. And I told you guys I was going to talk about this a little bit, right? For me watching this as a young adult, you know, this is now like what the third recession that I've already lived through in my twenties, like the third economic recession. I mean, there was the 2008 financial crisis when I was a kid. Then there was the pandemic, uh, that whole situation. And then now how the economy is performing over the last few months, you know, like it's been tough. And like you see these situations and you grow up constantly seeing the government like in a situation like this, right? Where the economy's screwed up in some way or there's some major looming disaster in some way. And the government response is never usually the adequate one. And with all of the distrust and everything that's been going on in society on a pretty Ba like a major scale, if we're being honest, like a basic foundation of society now. Like, I just don't see this going well if this is a continued thing. And, you know, Biden and anyone can go on live on the podium and whatever and say, oh, everything's going to be okay. You know, we're, we're going to step in and handle this. But are you really, are you really going to step in and handle this? Or is it going to be the rich folks getting bailed out again? You know what I mean? The, the bankers, you know, all these people who already, you know, have their hedge fund money and all this other bullshit. Are they the ones who are going to get bailed out? Are they the ones who are going to get that government help? You know what I mean? Like, they say they're insuring deposits and stuff like that. That's great. They should be, you know, people shouldn't lose their money in a bank collapse. That's just insane. Like that's a ridiculous possibility. No one wants to go through that. And like, you know, anyone with common sense would know that would just not be something that could happen in a modern economic system, right? Like that just would not go over. But like just witnessing all of this happen in real time, you know, at first they were pretty adamant about, oh, you know, SVC is going to be the only bank that collapses here or whatever, right? You know, it's a limited thing. It's not that big of a deal. Well, now they're there's another bank collapse. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's another one who's having problems, right? It's not like this is just the one. Now, a big problem right now that the regulators are kind of having in this situation is basically trying to find a buyer for the bank. And I'm assuming now with also Signature Bank failing, they may also have some issues finding any sort of buyer for that. So you might be confused. Oh, well, Optimus, if these banks failed or whatever, right? Why would anyone want to buy them? They, there's nothing there, right? These things are shut down. You know, the government's intervened. They're already, there's a crisis going on basically, right? Well, basically they're looking for someone to come in and like basically buy the assets or whatever that the bank held. Like uh, with Signature Bank, they had apparently $110 billion in assets. So basically what's left over of the entire thing, they kind of want to find somebody who's willing to buy that or whatever so that money can go back to the people who had deposits who need to be paid back or whatever I assume basically trying to just patch up the holes on the sinking ship you know what I mean like there's never going to be any sort of return really for these banks I don't assume at least I mean they've both been seized by the federal government so like I don't really picture a way they come back and if they do I, I, I don't know I just don't see it happening but they're struggling to find people to come in and do this right they're struggling to find people who have the money and that are willing to basically help patch off this up people don't really want to touch it you know what i mean even anyone who would have that kind of money to really get involved and intervene in any way in this kind of situation like no one really wants to get involved no one really wants to be the one to i guess have to get their hands dirty on this one and can you really blame anyone right like it just kind of
kind of feels like the economy in a lot of ways is in free fall, right? Like, I mean, you're seeing banks collapse. Like, that's a pretty significant moment, right? Like, that's not something that just happens every day. These are the second and third largest bank failures in our country's history. The richest country in the history of ever, right? Like, this is a pretty big deal. And I don't think people realize, like, how close we really could have been to, like, a full-on economic crisis. You know what I mean? And I guess, in a lot of ways, the government kind of avoided a complete collapse of the system and everything but like at the end of the day right like I don't know I, I just feel like most of us don't really think that this is going to end up well you know I, I don't see them really doing anything that's going to solve this issue like when I've I've noticed historically what they do especially when it comes to like fixing any sort of like economic problem they kind of just like kick the issue down the road a little bit you know what I mean like oh you know we'll, we'll kick it two or three terms down the road and see if someone will handle it then right they'll find a way to fund all of the things that they need to solve this or whatever they'll print money if they have to probably devalue the american dollar to absolutely nothing and they'll pay back their buddies you know they'll, they'll pay back all the people who run these banks and you know all their big millionaire deposits and stuff like that right that'll all get fixed but at the end of the day what does this mean long term right like do we really have a reason to believe in the u.s financial system at this point like i mean yeah i guess like what else what, what's the other options you know like oh we just don't believe in the economy i don't know like i don't really see another way out like, I feel like the entirety of our world is kind of just so attached to this at this point. Like, we kind of just have to hope that it works out, right? Like, hopefully the government does avoid a complete full-on collapse. Hopefully we don't have to deal with another major financial crisis in our lifetimes that are already pretty early on, you know? Like, no one wants to have to go through these types of situations, but of course, you know, when things are going the way that they have been, shit like this is more or less an inevitability, right? Like, I mean, people have been calling the warning signs on this for a while. They're saying a lot of this has possibly been triggered by the Federal Reserve's response to rising inflation and other issues. Basically, hiking interest rates and everything and just fucking going ballistic with that kind of stuff may have potentially overshot a little bit and basically created some well pretty major fallout here i don't know man it's just like uh why why do why does it feel like every week we're living through a major historical moment of some kind right like it's just really shitty but hey man that's just how life is i don't know but with that being said thank you guys for watching if you did enjoy make sure to leave a like subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel follow me over on twitter and twitch at sub to optimus make sure to check out shop optimus down below thank you to my watch optimus subscribers your support helps the channel tremendously and until my next video guys this is Optimus, well, talking about the damn near banking system collapse, who really knows, right, what's going on, but talking about this whole situation and signing out.